the biggest hurdle whenever you're saving for web and devices is you're, you're yeah, editing your image, everything looks great, everything's you know turned out just how you want it in Photoshop. But when you go to put it on the web, sometimes the resolution isn't perfect, sometimes the sharpness isn't quite there, sometimes the colors just really don't look right. Um, so we're gonna start off with colors. Basically when you're working in color in Photoshop, you have a couple different color modes. I'm gonna show you those right now. You don't need to go too complex into this, but it's good to understand some of your color modes. So we have a couple of the different working spaces here that you guys may have seen these sort of things before, like Adobe RGB, 1998, ProPhoto RGB, and sRGB. Has anyone seen these before? Show of hands, sRGB. Okay, cool. Most people are already up to date with that, which is pretty cool. So my advice to anyone working in Photoshop is you really want your, your working space, what you're actually gonna be doing your editing, you want that to be in something like ProPhoto RGB or Adobe RGB 1998. And the reason for that is that those color spaces are large color spaces. They contain the most amount of colors. So for instance, if you're gonna do a, a, a painting, right? Or <laughs> with crayons, what's a, what's a crayon painting called? <laughs> a drawing? <laughs> if you're working with sRGB, that's like having the box of eight crayons, okay? ProPhoto RGB is like the whole big box with 256 crayons and it's got the sharpener in the back and all your friends are jealous. That's what that one's like, you know. <laughs> you got like nine different blues for your sky. That's what that one's like. So I recommend editing in that one. But when it goes time to put your images on the internet, the internet, basically browsers, things like Chrome and Safari, they're designed to use sRGB. So when it comes time to put your images onto the internet, you don't wanna use that big box of crayons because it's not gonna display well on the internet. You wanna use sRGB because that's what internet browsers are designed to display. So, easy way to get around this, work on your image in, in the color spaces like Adobe RGB 1998 and ProPhoto RGB. And when you're getting ready to save, you wanna hit this button called Save for Web and Devices, which is what we're gonna show you now. Okay, so Save for Web and Devices. It's, it is what it is, right? It's like, I want this on the web. Okay, <laughs> I'll go to this file and we'll hit save for web. Now, this is uh, the newest version of Photos, Photoshop CC 2015. Um, older versions will say save for web and devices. This one just says save for web. So this is your save for web. Now, I recommend when you're saving your documents from Photoshop, there are really only two things that I, really, I recommend you need to save out. Your first is gonna be your layered file. This is gonna be a TIFF or a PSD, okay? This contains all your layers, it's your master file, you can come back to it whenever you want, okay? So that, that one you would just wanna use with the regular save command. Now anytime else you're saving an image out, I recommend using the save for web and devices because that's gonna be perfect for the web, it's gonna, it's gonna work for print, it's gonna work for you know, just about anything else you need to get your images on. So save for web and devices, is a, it, it's a very common dialogue. I'm in here all the time. All right, so I'm gonna kind of talk you guys through it, um, how to overcome some of the hurdles that you might have when, when getting your images up, and then we're gonna show you how to uh, actually preview some of these on the web. So we have a little preview here, which is nice. I can, I can see what my image would look full size. And basically, this is an exact copy of what I saw in my image earlier. Now we do have a few different options here for our presets. If you guys are interested in doing, creating uh, GIFs or GIFs or Jifes. You can do that. You can create those. You can do JPEGs. You can do PNGs, which will allow for transparency. And then you can do this one at the bottom that I've never seen before. That's WBMP. I don't do that one. <laughs> that is appropriate for nowhere. Um, anyway, so for now, we're going to choose JPEGs. They display really well on the internet. They compress well. And um, I, I recommend most images that are uploaded to the internet be JPEGs. Now, used to be whenever I was going into Photoshop, and I wanted an image, let's say I'm gonna put this on, on my website. I've got a portfolio site, and my, my column width is like 900 pixels wide, okay? So you don't wanna upload an image that is, this one here is 3,600, 3,600 pixels wide. You don't wanna upload a, an image that large and then have it only display at 900 pixels. There are a couple of reasons. First is file size. The larger your image, the larger your file size it's gonna be. So if you're putting this on the web, 
unless it's for archival purposes, you want that file size to be nice and small because it's going to load the page faster. And it's also generally just better in, you know, cut down those trees because you're not using as much energy to upload files and stuff like that. So it's just a general better idea. But you can do that here in this dialog box. So our width, we're just going to change to 900 and I'm going to hit enter. And there you can actually see, let's just take our preview and we're going to zoom it out uh, just a little bit to 50%. Um, there you can see my image is actually 900 pixels. So instead of having to go through the extra step of resizing and formatting everything uh, before I go into this dialog, you can size everything from the Save for Web and Devices. The other great option here is I can see the amount of space that it's going to be taken up on, um, on my computer or my web server. So this is 64, 68 kilobytes. Um, you can change your little preview here. I think it defaults on 56K modem, which for Photoshop CC 2015, they should probably change the default. I don't think many people are running on 56K anymore. Um, but <laughs> you can see, uh, so it'll take you know, less than a second to, to upload at that, at that space. Um, and here you can change the quality as well. My recommendation when it comes to quality for saving for the web and devices is choose the lowest possible quality you can while still maintaining a good image. So if I change my quality up to 100, let's change the, our preview back up to 100% too. Um, this is full quality here. If I change my quality down to 50% of the original, it still looks pretty good. You really can't tell that much. And it takes half of the file size. So this is huge. It means you can have all your images on your website load twice as fast and still pretty much look the same. Um, getting down to something like 25%, you will start, start to see some degradation. That, that doesn't look as clear as it did at 50, and then I'll come down to 10 for, for the broadcast, I'm sure. I'm going to just really exaggerate this for the broadcast just to make sure that um, you can really, can everyone see it? Like 2% doesn't look that great, but still not that bad. Um, and at 2%, we're down to 23 kilobytes, whereas um, 100%, we would be at 353. So it's over 10 times smaller um, the lower your percentage goes. All right, well, let's bring this down to 50%. And then, uh, and then the last thing we want to do when we're about to put this online is just get a little preview of what it's going to actually look like online. And that's actually built into Photoshop as well. So down here in the Safer Web and Devices, there's a little preview button. And I highly recommend clicking this because if you click that, it's going to open up a browser window. It's going to show you exactly what your image looks like in your browser. This is, I'm in Chrome right now. It's going to show, show you exactly what it looks like. It's going to tell you all of your image dimensions, and it's going to spit out a little bit of code for you as well. So you never have to worry, what's my image going to look like when it actually gets on the internet? Because this is on the internet. Well, it's, you know, it's displaying on a browser, which is using the exact same technology it would use to display a browser on a browser, a browser that is, a, I want one of those, whatever it is, uh, on the browser on the internet. So there we go. And uh, we've saved for web, we've chosen our JPEG, our quality, and uh, everything looks good. So we're ready to hit save. We'll just put this right in here into our, into our class images, and we'll call this 10 tips web, and hit go. And now we're ready to upload our image, put it on the internet, and uh, we're good to go.